Boom, boom. Okay. Unit 11, day three. We're combining law of sines and cosines now. So let's just go over some basics of this. So you use law of sines when you're given two angles and one side. So that's either, either, either angle side angle or angle angle side. Or when you're given two sides and one angle, where it's side side angle, don't spell that backwards. Okay? So that's when you use law of sines. Law of cosines, on the other hand, you use it when you're given two sides and one angle, but that's side angle side. Or when you're given three sides, so it's side side side. Okay? And that has to be the angle in between. And remember, we're not really using those equations. You can use them, but the left side is always the opposite side. And then the ones in between are your adjacent sides. Okay? And let's go through these. And this is going to tell us, are we going to use law of sines or are we going to use law of cosines here? So on this first one, we have side, angle, side. Well, you use side, angle, side with law of cosines, so that's law of cosines. And you can solve for x if you want to for extra practice. You probably should. It's a good idea. x is 13.3, so you can double check that you actually get that. I would do that if I were you. Solve for x. Okay. Now on this next one, we have angle, side, angle. So ASA. That is law of sines. You can solve for x there. It's about 32.2. Okay, let's look at this next one. We have side, side, angle. So SSA, which is law of sines. Cool. This last one we have side, 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 which is SSS which is law of cosines. Okay, and solve for that angle, you get 78.5. Cool. Now, get into the little bit more tricky stuff. So we're going to solve for a triangle, and we have to find all the missing sides and angles. We have to use the information given, and we have to round to the nearest tenth. We don't know the triangle yet, so anytime you don't have a triangle, if they don't give you a triangle, you draw the dang triangle. So we're going to draw the triangle. That's supposed to say measure of angle A. So angle A is 47. So let's label A 47. Angle B is 52. So that's 52. Then AC is 13. Okay. Now this is an angle, angle, side. So I'm going to use law of sines. But before I do that, we're given two angles in here. We know that all of the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So let's use that information to solve for angle C. So that's going to be 180 minus 47 minus 52, which gets you 81. So C is 81. We just solved for one of our missing pieces that we're supposed to solve for. And then we did it in an easy way, right? Now, let's use law of sines. So, that's going to be sine of 52 over 13 equals sine of 81 over AB. Or that AB, you could, it's the same thing as little c. Okay, AB and little c are the same thing. We're going to cross multiply this. So, you get AB times the sine of 52 equals 13 times the sine of 81 divide by the sine of 52 to both sides. So you get AB equals 13 sine of 81 divided by sine of 52. Put that in your calculator. You get 16.3 after you round it. So that is 16.3. Now we're going to use law of sines again to solve for BC. That's going to be sine of 52 over 13 equals sine of 47 over BC. Cross multiply, get BC sine of 52 equals 13 sine of 47. Divide by the sine of 52. You get BC equals 13 sine of 47 divided by the sine of 52. Put it in your calculator, you get 12.1. So BC is 12.1.
We found all the angles in the triangle. We found all of the sides. We are golden. We're good. Okay? So really, we're just putting everything together. That's all we're doing right now. Now, let's look at this one. So we have X, Y, Z. X, Y is 29. Y, Z is 22. And X, Z is 21. This is a side, side, side triangle. So I am going to use law of cosines. And we're, let's start with solving for X, just because X was the first one that is on our list up in the right corner. So let's solve for X. Remember, it's opposite side squared equals adjacent side squared plus adjacent side squared minus 2 times both the adjacent sides times the cosine of X. Square those out, you get 484 plus 841, or equals 841 plus 441 minus 1,218 cosine of X. Add 841 and 441, you get 1282. Subtract that over, you get negative 798 equals negative 1,218 cosine of X. Divide by the negative, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> 1,218. So we get cosine of x equals 798 divided by 1,218. Anytime you're finding an angle, you use the inverse. So that will be x equals cosine inverse of 798 divided by 1,218, which is 49.1. So x equals 49.1. Now we have an angle. I don't really want to use law of cosines again. Let's use the law of sines to solve for y. So that's going to be sine of 49.1 over 22 equals sine of y over 21. Cross multiply. 21 sine of 49.1 equals 22 sine of y. Divide by 22. So you get sine of y equals 21 sine of 49.1 over 22. Anytime you find an angle, you use the inverse. So y equals sine inverse of 21 sine of 49.1 divided by 22, which is 46.1. Point 0.2, sorry. Okay. Now we have two angles. We only need one more angle. I know that all of the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So I'm going to take 180, subtract the 46.2, get 133.8. Oh, wait. Woo! Back up. Okay. <laughs> we just use law of signs. When you use law of signs, you always have to check to make sure there's not another angle. So I'm going to take the 180, subtract 46.2, and I get 133.8. This is the one we're going to circle. We're going to put a question mark. That is our possible angle. Now, we're going to take that angle, add it to the one we already had, so 49.1. You get 182.9, which is greater than 180. So that angle does not work. So the only possible measure for y is 46.2. Okay. Now, we know the two angles, so we can subtract this from 180. So we have 180 minus 49.1 minus 46.2, you get 84.7. So Z equals 84.7. We found all three angles, so we are golden. Okay, whoa, back up. That's for the next um, video. So remember to take the quiz, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.